Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are looking at prime and composite numbers. Uh, we are in our home links, unit 2, lesson 5. And before we get started, let's define what a prime number is. Prime numbers are whole numbers that have exactly two different factors. One and the number itself. So whole numbers with just two factors, one and the number itself. If it's got more than two factors, it makes it composite, okay? Now, you might be thinking, but I don't know which ones are prime or not. Well, if you've never noticed this little icon in the corner of your uh, home links or at the top of your math journal pages, uh, SRB is exactly what it stands for, your student reference book. If you go to pages 53 and 54, it's got an explanation about prime numbers, and it even gives you a list of which of the first 20 numbers, 1 through 20, are prime or composite. So you can always refer to that. But hey, Mr. Wassman is your friend here, so he did a little Google search and found uh, a picture of a prime numbers uh, chart, and there it is. Okay, so let's move that over to the side out of the way for just a second. Okay, I'm moving things around on the fly here. So, as you can see, the numbers in white are prime. That means they only have two factors, one and the number itself. Anything that is yellow means that it's composite. That means it at least has a, a third factor or more. Okay, for example, you'll notice that all the numbers under 2 that end in 2 are composite because all numbers that end in 2 are, that's right, even or divisible by 2. That's also true with 4, 6, 8, and 10. Any number that's even is going to be composite because by the nature of it being even, that means it's divisible by 2, okay? So there aren't a lot of prime numbers once you get beyond uh, single digits. Uh, some weird ones that usually end in a 3 or a 7 or a 9, but not always, okay? And then you might see up in the corner the number 1. Well, what's the number 1 mean? Well, it's neither prime nor composite because... The definition of prime is that it has exactly two different factors, one and another number. Well, if one is the number you're multiplying by one, that's only one number total. You have to have two factors to make it prime. So one is special, the loneliest number. Uh, so when I look at problem number one and it asks, is 11 prime or composite? Well, I can just simply go to my chart and yes, it is prime. So that means the only factors I can multiply to get 11 is 1 in itself. So I would write prime right here. Now, once we've eliminated all the prime numbers, like for example, 19, because over here on the chart, I can see that 19 is prime, along with 29, while I'm here. So I can just label those as prime. And be done with those. Now that leaves quite a few numbers that are composite, which means I'm going to have to figure out uh, what are the other factor pairs that could be used to uh, multiply to get to that composite product, okay? So let's take 24, for example. What are all the different ways I can multiply two numbers together to get 24? Well, we know that 1 times 24 will work. And because 24 is even, 2 is a factor as well. 2 times 12 gets me to 24. Um, I also have 3 times 8 and 4 times 6. These are all factor pairs that get me to 24. Okay? 
So that would make this number composite. And that's pretty much it. If you know which numbers are prime, and you know what, a quick Google search on prime numbers will reveal uh, a prime numbers chart, so that's an easy reference for you to find. Thank you, Google. Uh, but the more important skill right here is being able to determine how many different ways you can multiply two numbers together to get that composite uh, product. That's the challenge. Some numbers, like say 100, are going to have a lot of combinations. So take a look at these problems and give it a go. Uh, lastly, I want you to pay attention to the practice problems down at the bottom. Uh, some larger number, addition and subtraction. Let me just do one of the addition problems, technically. It's not an addition problem. 8,158 equals 5,071 plus something. We don't know what that something is. How do we find out that something? Well, technically, when you have an addition problem with a missing add-end, and that's what numbers are that you add, they're called an add-end, you've really got a subtraction problem. 7 equals 4 plus something. Well, that's the same as saying 7 minus 4 equals something. Okay? So that's what we're going to do with this number. Okay? But instead of it being 7 and minus 4, it's going to be 8,158 minus 5,071. Now, the reason why I line these up vertically is to show whether or not I have to do any kind of regrouping. Well, I'm, pretty in, I'm in pretty good shape with 8 minus 1 in the 1's column, but when I get to the 10's, I don't have enough, so I have to take one of my 10's, or I'm sorry, one of my 100's, break it up into 10 10's and add to the 5 10's, which gives me 15 tens. So 15 tens minus 7 tens equals 8 tens. 0 minus 0 is 0, and then 8 minus 5 is 3. So my uh, difference is 3,087, or my missing add end would be 3,087. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to your math teacher. Otherwise, friends, give it a go, and uh, we will talk again soon. Thanks.